high profile attacks in Europe, but they're also killing Muslims throughout the Middle East. People who are innocent, uh, people who are guilty only of worshiping Islam in a different way than this organization. Uh, they are poisoning the minds of young people everywhere, not just in Europe, but in the United States and undoubtedly in Argentina. People are looking on these websites. Yeah, all right, there he is. Uh, joining us now to talk about uh, the entire Middle East is a man who knows just about as much or more than anybody else, Avi Malamed. He's a fellow for the Eisenhower Institute, former senior top Israeli intelligence official and author of a great new book, Inside the Middle East. There it is, Making Sense of the Most Dangerous and Complicated Region on Earth. Great to see you, sir. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having me. All right. Pleasure. So um, yeah, let, let me start with the, the news of the day. You know, they got the guy. They believe they have the guy uh, in, the, in the white hat that they were Brussels. looking for in Brussels. Um, should we fear, should, should we be led to believe now that because he may know something, that the next attack might be speeded up, just like when they caught the first guy, they said they speeded up the, the attacks on the Brussels airport and the train. Should we fear that an attack now is imminent somewhere? Well, it's definitely a possibility. I would say that we should always be on alert because, unfortunately, we understand today there is a growing challenge of uh, terror threat in different parts of Europe, and the United States is not excluded. No, no, absolutely not. All right, I, I want to focus on, on, on the Middle East, uh, and, and I want to focus right now. I, I read a report that uh, the U.S. is thinking of, of, of withdrawing or moving their troops from the Sinai um, that they have patrolled a, along a border, I think, with Egypt as part of the peace deal with Israel and Egypt and the Sinai, um, because they're afraid that ISIS is, is going to kill them or get them. Is that what it's come to? Well, I heard about this report. I don't know if it's accurate, but I would say something like that. Um, evacuating Sinai or disappearing from Sinai would be a fatal mistake. Sinai is located on a horizontal corridor of a growing momentum of militant Islamist groups spreading all the way from Morocco towards Libya, Tunisia, Egypt, Sinai, continuing to Gaza Strip towards Jordan and Iraq. Uh, abandoning this area would be a fatal mistake. Yeah, uh, and, and it would send some one hell of a signal to ISIS and, and, the, and the Muslim world and to the free world if the United States in effect runs because they're afraid of ISIS, no? Yes, again, I don't know if this report yeah, but is if, uh, if, uh, under the premise yeah. that, the, that this report is at least out there. All right, um, let's, let's talk about what do you, I mean, what is the biggest threat right now in, in the Middle East uh, when it comes to Israel and, and, and the surrounding area? Is it ISIS and, and Islamic you know, militants? Is it the Iran deal? and you know their rockets that they have now that could reach parts of Israel with the ballistic missiles or the development which many believe their continued development of a nuclear weapon which maybe they, they have already or they're going to get what what is the number one threat in that region in the Israeli eyes the biggest threat today and for a long time is Iran uh, the combination of the fact that Iran fuels its proxies in different parts of the Middle East by arming them and funding them and so forth. Hezbollah, Hezbollah Yemen, in Lebanon and yeah. Syria, Houthis in Yemen, yeah. of Afghan and Pakistan, yeah. Shiite militias, Iraqi militias. Together with uh, the Iranian race towards a nuclear military capacity, this is of course a source of a growing concern. By the way, this is the major concern of Arab states as well and mostly the neighbors of Iran. And is this, is this and I've asked this over the... Uh, over the months and maybe the, over the past few years since Obama has uh, really uh, turned that whole region upside down, uh, has this brought Israel, is there behind the scenes cooperation with Israel and Saudi Arabia, more so with Jordan now, maybe even with Egypt, are they kind of uniting in some way behind the scenes to combat this threat of Iran and the Islamic militants? Well, definitely. The Israel and the Arab states are today sharing some long-term strategic interest, uh, blocking Iran, trying to contain and diminish the momentum of the Islamic uh, groups and trying to maintain some kind of like, stability in the region. One of the outcomes of that is that there is a growing cooperation tactically and beyond tactically, intelligence as well between Israel and some of the Arab states, for example, Israel and Egypt, Israel and Jordan. Yeah. You could assume there is a developing uh, discussion between Israel and the Arab Gulf states. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me ask you this. When people talk about um, uh, peace with the Palestinians, what... How on earth could there ever be peace, and, and especially, I don't understand anyone living in Israel who believes this, um, you know, with a society that teaches your kids on, on TV that they run, on, in, the, in the school textbooks, the incitement, you know, kill the Jew from, from the time they're children, 
plants trees and made names soccer stadiums after the martyrs who killed women and children. How? Why would you ever want to give them an inch, uh, another piece of land to operate from? Why? You know, people are talking about the concept of the two-state solution, which I believe in the end of the, of the process should be the right solution in, in order to try to end the conflict. But what I'm saying is today this, this solution is totally not doable. It's not viable. And what I'm offering today is to abandon the concept of an Israeli-Palestinian agreement and to endorse the concept of an Israeli-Arab agreement. I just published uh, recently an article at The Hill explaining the benefits of that. All right, folks, it's all in the book. It's all inside inside the Middle East. Avi, great to see you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank it's you, a complicated Steve. situation and it's fascinating. <laughs> We're coming back with Gimme Five.